but I would have to say that much of what kept me awake way, way, way too way into the uh, early hours of the morning was thinking about Palestine. It was thinking about how one people feels that it has the right to oppress another people in order to be supposedly safe. The state of Israel has a right to a narrative. It may or may not be valid. It is disturbing, however, that the state of Israel does not wish to allow Palestinians to have their narrative heard. It is partly the subjugation of the narrative that allows the occupation to continue. If people around the world really understood the situation in Palestine, it is very difficult to believe that they would sit back and do nothing. Um, I've had the, I can't say pleasure, I have been to the West Bank um, and anyone who goes there and who emerges from there and says it is not an occupation has fallen through the looking glass of Alice in Wonderland. It is an open air prison, especially Gaza. I have a long history of finding uh, no comfort in being silent in the face of aggression by a state, whether it is my own, whether it is the state of Israel, or any other nation that feels like it can take other people's land and call it okay. In the, especially because they twist national security concerns to justify the stealing of land and the oppression of people and the racism and treating them like they are less than human. I informally decided this was called Give Diplomacy a, a Chance because after I, you know, when I started skimming articles, I, I saw one line at the end of the first paragraph of um, an article in which it called upon the Palestinian people to give diplomacy a chance. With that, I had to close my computer and try to go to sleep. How many decades do people have to give diplomacy a chance? It's an absurdity at this point to call it giving diplomacy a chance. If I were a Palestinian person, I would be wondering who is my partner in this negotiation? How can, well, first of all, you occupy me, so it's a total, you know, asymmetry of power, as we all know. But on top of that, you're stealing more of my land. How can a state say that we should give diplomacy a chance when it continues to steal the land and livelihood and water and resources of the people of Palestine? To think that that is a true negotiating partner, partner again, is like falling through Alice's looking glass. I realize that people think the BDS movement is awful and that it isolates Israel and the people of Israel should not have to suffer. That's one point of view. That point of view also says that if you support the BDS movement, you are giving Netanyahu and the right wing fodder. They also said, not, not the BDS, but people also said that the 14 nations that voted for resolution 2334 were giving Netanyahu and the right wing fodder, that they were 14 votes against negotiation. That means that anything that anyone does that does not accept the Israeli state narrative is giving fodder to Netanyahu and the right wing. That's insane. That, that implies we should all sit back and do nothing and hope that the benevolence of the occupying state will find itself and free the Palestinian people. That's not how power works. Power does not concede power without pressure, period. We all know that. So why do we pretend 
that actions taken to put pressure on the state of Israel will not push the state of Israel to change its behavior. No state likes to be a pariah. Look at South Africa. You know, we're told that the BDS movement won't work, won't do anything. Well, it helped in South Africa. If the people of, if the people of Israel, who many of the speakers yesterday recognized are sticking their head in the sand and willfully ignoring the reality of the occupation, if they don't feel discomfort in that, why will they do anything to change the situation? Very few people take action as long as they are comfortable. It is not that anyone wishes ill on Israeli people. What people wish is that you get off your butt and do something. And that will not happen until you are out of your comfort zone. I was pleased to see that Amnesty International has now launched a campaign calling for a ban on settlement goods, the importation of settlement goods, as well as countries not allowing their corporations to carry out activities in the settlements. Well, that's long overdue. But I would hope that I, I, don't, I don't communicate with Amnesty on this, but I would hope that that effort is bigger than just a call, right? They're calling for this. I hope they do something like this. List the companies, list the governments, list the products so that people don't have to, you know, you go online, you Google, you find some products that come from settlements, but if you have a place you can go and you see the entire list, then people can target those companies. It's easier. I also would hope that Amnesty and other organizations in the context of this would put pressure on those governments in the West who have not recognized the state of Palestine. If you want to pressure the state of Israel, you recognize the state of Palestine. You begin to make it a reality, as speakers said yesterday, so that it can't be done away with. Stigmatization, making people pariah, helps to bring about change. Universal rights are threatened by the fear perpetrated by governments under the guise of national security, who then allow themselves to take away our rights. And it is happening inside Israel as well. Um, people cannot protest things they do not know about. Thus, the control by the state of Israel of the narrative makes it difficult in some circumstances for people to take action. If you don't know what's going on, it's hard to act. And if you don't want to know what's going on, it's really easy to hide behind that. 